Hello and welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and I'm here today with the Creative Design Team bringing you ideas for Christmas tags. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you saw Jema and Carrie's tag videos yesterday, I know you must be inspired and have tons of ideas. I know I am. We're going to create three different tags today, and I already have some items out on my desk. I hear all the time that people buy stamps and they don't use the stamps, so I am hoping to inspire you to dig through your stash and see what kind of Christmas-themed stamps you have and create tags similar to what I'm going to show you today. So, the first tag is going to be all about stamping, and I'm going to show you how much interest and color we can add with just stamps, and then we'll step it up with pattern paper and die cuts and different embellishments. I do have the Buildable Tags Thin Cut Set from Close to My Heart. These are really cool. You can see there's different pieces. This makes a pocket. We have a traditional tag shape, a rounded tag, and then a smaller version of each of these, and you can do some really cool layering techniques and shakers with these little inner pieces and then these cut out the little hole reinforcers to finish the tag off so this one here has the elongated and then the circle goes with um, the rounded ones lots of different things you can do there there are also a smaller set of tags these are the tags and tabs thing cuts definitely a staple in my craft room, but I am going to be using the larger ones today. I've already cut several tags. A little tip for you. If you layer two pieces of cardstock on top of each other at once and then run it through your die cutting machine, you can get a two for one. So it minimizes, you know, it lessens the amount of times you have to pass your plates through the die cutting machine, saving a little bit of time. So it definitely cuts two, depending on the paper. Sometimes you can cut three. I have Farm Fresh Christmas. This is a fun stamp set from the September and October catalog, but it is still available. We're going to be using this handsome buck here and the reindeer game sentiment. And I'm also going to bring in another stamp. This one here is called Holiday Special, and we're going to be using these trees here across the bottom. I have selected a few different inks. We have Candy Apple, Sage, and Toffee for our first stamp that we're going, our first tag that we're going to create. So let me get this cleared up and we'll get started. I'm bringing in my all purpose mat because I'm going to do a little ink blending around the edges of my tags. This is a really nice surface to work on because you can wipe it up super easily. I have toffee ink. I'm going to apply that to my round tag, one of the craft colored tags and this tag shape here. I'm going to use this little ink blending brush. I have a foam just for my toffee color there. I have to apologize for my voice. I am getting over a cold and that's why I sound a little bit off. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you're probably thinking, she sounds a bit nasally. Yes, <laughs> my teenagers love to bring home germs, so thoughtful of them. Uh, but yeah, I'm just nothing major, just a little head cold, and I'm getting over that. So bear with me here. I'm going to just go around with my ink blending tool here, and I like to do this first and then add the stamping, because if you stamp first and then do the ink blending, you can smear your sentiments. So definitely do this first. If you think about it, if you want to do it afterwards, it's not the end of the world but um, I do recommend doing it first just to avoid smearing any of the ink that we layer on top. I'll go ahead and get these other two done off camera. So we have all three of our tags with that beautiful toffee color around the edge. I'm going to set these two aside and we're going to focus on this one for now. Now whenever you're mass producing, it is very helpful to have a stamping positioner. I have the Misty here. This is the original size and I've already uh, mounted the stamp. We have our little trees here to the bottom of the misty door here. Typically you would want to secure it in the corner so that you know it stays put and you can stamp it several times but I wanted the middle of my stamp and if I had it in the corner I wouldn't quite be able to get that. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it here to see where I want it. I think that looks good. We're going to go up off the bottom just a bit and adhere that with our magnet and now we're ready to ink up our stamp. 
For my trees, I have sage ink. I wanted a lighter color green, and you'll see why here in a bit, because we're stamping over the top of these, and I didn't want too dark of a color so that our sentiment will stand out. So go ahead and give it a good press. And when we lift up, that looks pretty good. We can actually restamp it. Uh, if you don't like the coverage, you want it a little bit darker, or if you missed inking up a spot, you can just do that again. Perfect, looking good. Now I love to use a stamp chamois. This looks pretty well loved, but you moisten it and you can rinse it out each time, but it is really helpful for keeping your stamps clean. I just keep that right in a little Tupperware and then just wet it each time I'm going to use it. So I am going to bump this over to the corner now and we're going to place our sentiment. I'll go ahead and move my trees. And now I have our sentiment, it says reindeer games. And I'm lining that up on the left hand side, just like so. Close the misty door to pick up your stamp there and then just make sure that is right back in the corner. This time we're using candy apple red ink and we'll go ahead and ink up our sentiment. You can see where using a stamp positioner would be very helpful when you are mass producing. You would just go through and stamp the sentiment on each of your tags, then swap out to your next image and keep in that assembly line fashion. So now I have my little deer head here. We're using toffee ink to ink him up. And we're going to stamp him on the right hand side of the tag like so. So you can see this looks really cool with all these stamped images layered over the top of each other. Now we could stop here, but I'm going to add a little bit more to this tag. So if you like a little simpler look or just want to keep them easy, this is a good stopping point. But let's uh, step it up a bit. You guys know I love my Versamat, and whenever I'm doing a lot of stamping, I like to work on the back side. It has this foam backing perfect for cushioning your stamps to help you get a really nice image. Now this stamp we're going to be using on our next tag, but I also want to show you there's these different little sentiments on here that are super tiny, all sorts of different sayings, and I'm going to use those to add some more stamping to this tag. I'm going to be stamping off the edge so I have a piece of paper to protect my mat, and then we're using black ink. Get that open, let me grab my block. So a little tip for you, whenever you have long stamps like this, just don't throw them, lay them down on your surface and then pick them up with your block. When we tend to peel them up and try to get them straight on our block, they tend to not be as straight as if you were to pick them up that way. So just a little tip and it, I find it very helpful. So this one says Christmas Eve. I felt that our deer head needed to be grounded, so it was a little disconnected from the trees, and this is going to add just a little bit more interest to the tag and just help kind of tie everything together and ground him so he's not just floating out there by himself. So the first one says Christmas Eve, and then Believe in Magic, and then I'm stamping Christmas Eve again, but I'm staggering them. As you can see me just kind of adjusting how far across the tag they reach. And then it says making memories and gather together. So just really nice Christmas themed sentiments. We're just creating some text there. So I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add some splatter with the Dina Wakely gloss spray in the color Gilt. And this is my favorite of the gloss sprays that uh, we have in our catalog from Dina Wakely. And it's just this gorgeous gold. It's perfect for fall, perfect for Christmas. And I'm just adding some splatters to give it that little pop of Christmas magic. I have cut one of the little re hole reinforcers in the color Evergreen. And I'll go ahead and layer that onto the top with some little liquid glue so we can slide it into place. Now I do want to layer a, another tag on the back just to clean it up and make it a little, give it some stability and some weight to it. And so I just cut two tags for each of them. I've grabbed a little ribbon from my stash. I'm going to double that over, thread it through itself. We'll tuck the little tails through the loop, pull it tight. Very simple. And our little tag is finished here. I do want to stamp to and from, so I grabbed this funny secret Santa. This is still available, but you can see there's all these little sentiments on there, perfect for tag making. But I grabbed the to and from, and I'm inking that up in black ink, and I'm stamping that on the back of my tag. 
So here is our first tag and you could see I just smeared that just a little bit but it is still usable and this is the first one I made. You can see those uh, gilt little splatters. I accidentally had one giant splatter so then I just repeated it in a little you know triangle I made three of them and I think it looks kind of cool actually it just added to the tag so definitely a repeatable tag something you can mass produce and it's all stamping I just love that we have created this with stamping so we're ready to move on to our second tag for our second tag, we're going to use the rounded top tag, and then I also have the holly and ivy, and we're just using this stamp set on this tag. So I'm going to show you how to take this design, this layout, if you will, and use a different stamp set to uh, create a different look. So we'll just set that right there for reference. I'm going to scoot that out of the way. I have candy apple red ink. And so basically we look at this and we have our large sentiment running vertically on the left hand side of the tag. I'm going to turn this this way because I find that helpful for me when I'm lining things up. I have the word Christmas and we're going to ink that up and stamp it right on the left hand side just like so. There, that looks good. Nice, fits pretty good. Okay, perfect. And I'm showing you guys you can do this without a misty also. For our next image, we're going to use the toffee color here. Let me grab my stamp. I have selected the little fawn that is standing up and these are so pretty. They are really uh, have this vintage feel to them. I, I love this stamp set. So we're going to stamp this. It's not going to quite fit, but that's okay. We'll have the little fawn coming off the edge there. And we'll just give that a good press. This tag um, and the next one were inspired by a Christmas card I made in the 31 Days of Christmas. And I love the way it turned out. If you're not familiar with the 31 Days of Christmas, it was so much fun. The creative design team collaborated all month long during October and there were 31 videos featuring a new Christmas card every single day. And really it was more than 31 cards because many of the videos featured one card and then they, they would show you different variations of that card. So, so many creative ideas and different styles from mass producing simple cards to really pulling out all the stops and creating a card with all the bells and whistles. There were so many techniques in there to learn and I learned a lot. It was really an awesome experience. Oops, we weren't quite done with the black ink yet. I want to do one more little swirly here. Let's see, I'm going to orient that like that because I just want to ink up part of this. And then we're going to come in off the edge there. Right about there. That looks good. Blot that off. We'll clean this up. I don't know why I keep putting away my black, I'm getting ahead of myself. So now we have the stamp here and it says Christmas Eve and we're going to do some first, second and third generation stamping. So it looks like it's fading off. So for the top one, I just wanted to say Christmas. So I'm going to stamp that and then I'm going to ink it up again just so it's even. Blot it off and then stamp and stamp. Perfect. I love that worn look that that gives when you do the first, second, and third generation inking like that. So you can see how we've taken a design concept and used completely different stamps. This one has a more masculine kind of bold look to it and this is very soft and feminine with the rounded edges and the very scripty font and of course the deer is much more feminine than this masculine bold buck. So you know same design concept different look. I do want to add some splatters and then we need to finish off the top of this tag. This time I'm using my black shimmer brush and I always like to kind of practice first because sometimes you can get big blobs and we don't want that. So just start kind of off the edge here, adding a little bit of splatters. I think that looks good. Sometimes less is more. And I'll go ahead and get this cleaned up in just a second. This time I have a little red tag topper there or hole reinforcer if you will. Use a little bit of liquid glue and line that right over the hole. Perfect. 
So for a little bit different look on this tag, we just loop the ribbon through over back on itself. I am going to poke my ribbon through the tag here, just halfway, fold it up, and then we have this waxy flax. I wish this was still available. This product was awesome, but it's in red. It's like a hemp that has a waxy finish to it. And then I like to tie this around the base. Just do a little loop there and then pull it tight and then tie a bow. I am not the world's best bow tire, but this waxy flax makes it super easy. So then we'll just pull our little tails so that's nice and even there. I like it. You can even scoot it down a little bit. And then these are a bit long, so I'm gonna just trim those down like so. And there is our second tag. So a uh, whole different look. Again, same design concept. And now we're going to step it up. So these were just featuring stamping and you know ink and paper. And now we're going to create another tag with some pattern paper and some die cut images. Actually, before we move on, I'm going to show you one more tag I created following this design concept here. For those of you that like to decorate for Christmas with blues and silvers, this is the tag for you. I use the January months of the year stamp. For those of you that aren't familiar, there is a themed stamp for each month, January through December, and these are so fun. Title options, all sorts of icons appropriate for that particular month. But you can see here we've stamped our sentiment on the vertical. We have our main image here on the right hand side and then filled in with some smaller stamping. So really, really a versatile pattern as you can see by the three we've created here. So for our third tag, I am using a craft colored tag for my background and we are again using the holly and ivy. I've already gone ahead and stamped the two little fawns and cut and colored them. So they're ready to go just to keep this video from being too long. I also have a piece of pattern paper from the holly and ivy collection. You can see it's got the black background with the different holly leaves on there and we're actually going to rip this. I'm gonna rip it this way so that it does not have the white border showing. So when we flip it over, we have this nice torn edge. And then this is the evergreen glitter paper. Look how gorgeous that is, so pretty. We're going to do just a little bit of stamping. You'll need black and toffee. So just following the same design as the other two, I have my sentiment here. It says, countdown to Christmas. I'm gonna turn my tag sideways just to make it easier for me. And that looks like it should go right about there. And then we're gonna use the toffee ink to use this circular stamp that says December 25th, just like we did on the last one. So toffee is gonna give it kind of a soft tone on tone look here. Stamp that right there, perfect. We're ready to adhere our layers. I'm just gonna use a little glue on the back of this piece here and layer this on the bottom of the tag to anchor everything down. And it'll give our little fawns a place to rest. A little strip across the bottom for the glitter, the glitter paper here. You can never have too much glitz and sparkle at Christmas, right? My glue's running a little low. That's never a good thing. So we'll just line this right up on the bottom. And now we can layer our little fawns over top here. So I'm gonna grab my clear Tombow glue. And this, I really actually like to adhere my die cuts with this one. It goes on nice and thin and dries clear and it's super strong. So this one I'm applying directly to the tag base and I'm situating it just right in between the sentiment and the stamped image up up top there. For the second one, I'm using these 3D foam dots and these come in two sizes and these are the smaller ones. So I just put a little foam dots on the back to give this some um, dimension, pop it up and add a little shadowing behind the image. And I just think that looks really cool. I have a black tag topper for this particular tag. So I'll go ahead and get that glued down. These little hole reinforcers make such a big difference and just finish it off. Now it's fun to dress up the back of these as well. Craft paper is a little bit thinner than regular paper, so I definitely recommend adhering a, or recommending that you adhere a second tag. But before we do that, 
let's take some toffee ink and we're going to take that same Christmas sentiment here and stamp that right on the edge of our tag. Just add some character, a little something something on the back. And then we'll take black ink and stamp to and from. So we can write the recipient and the, let's see, I think, well, actually, I'm going to go this way. Even though the front of the tag is vertical, I think it's fine that the back is horizontal. It's your own little world. We can, we can do what we want, right? We'll go ahead and glue these together. Just don't get too close to the edge. That way, when you press them together, it doesn't... Um, squish out the edges there. Slide these into place. Perfect. So we have our finished tag and I accidentally forgot I should have added black shimmer brush to the background before I put my little uh, fawns on there. You can see that does add quite a bit of interest to the background, but look at that glitter paper. So pretty. For those of you that did participate in the 31 Days of Christmas, do you recognize where these tags came from? I want to mention that registration has reopened for a limited time. It's just the month of November, so you have a few days left to take advantage of the offer. And like I said, there are 31 videos, all full of tips and card making techniques, inspiration. You're going to learn a ton. And then there is a PDF printable guide that for all 31 cards. It has the recipe for each card, the cutting dimensions, how to put it together, plus tips and tricks. For more information on the 31 Days of Christmas card exclusive event, you can find a link in the description box below that will take you to the website with all the information and how to join. If you have not seen Chelsea's video, you're going to want to watch that right here. I know she has something amazing to share with you. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.